Okay, in this video, we're going to look at uh, the benefits of campaign building. Wargaming is a strategic and tactical simulation of armed conflict and has long been a popular pastime for many of you, yes, who enjoy the depth and complexity of military operations. While individual battles and skirmishes are the backbone of wargaming, um, campaign building it adds a much richer and more immersive dimension to this experience. Uh, and in this video, we're going to look at some of the reasons why campaigning building is um, beneficial for wargaming and, and in it, why it enhances both the enjoyment and the depth of the hobby. Now, campaign building allows players to create and follow a storyline that spans multiple battles and scenarios. Uh, and this continuity can add a quite a nice narrative layer to a game, um, transforming isolated skirmish, you know, pickup games into a larger unfolding saga. Um, it allows players to become more invested in their armies and the outcomes of their engagements um, when each battle contributes to an overarching um, plot. Now, this immersion makes the gaming experience um, more engaging and meaningful as players see their um, strategies and decisions impact the broader campaign narrative. In, in most campaigns, campaigns and players will, um, will need to think beyond the immediate battle. Um, they'll need to consider um, logistics, uh, reinforcements, resource management, um, and long-term strategic goals. Now, this multi-layered decision-making um, kind of mirrors real-world military campaigns a lot more closely than, say, a one-off pickup game. Um, it means that players must plan their moves several steps in advance, uh, and they need to take into account um, potential and uh, uh, future engagements and their uh, overall in strategy. And this adds a really nice layer of complexity and realism um, that will enhance the intellectual challenge of wargaming. Um, campaigns often include rules for character and unit progression, where commanders and true gain um, uh, additional experience and skills and sometimes a new abilities if they survive and succeed in battles. Uh, this progression system can be highly re rewarding as it allows players to see their units evolve and grow stronger over a period of time uh, and it kind of encourages a, a careful management of resources and forces, as well as fostering a sense of attachment and pride in their armies, it can allow them to build a narrative of their own army. Uh, campaigns provide a um, basically a framework, framework for a diverse range of scenarios and missions. Instead of just repeatedly fighting the same type of battle, players can face varied, various ob objectives, um, such as defending a fort, supplying, capturing a vital supply line, or conducting a strategic withdrawal. Uh, and this, this variety keeps the gameplay not only fresh and exciting, but, but prevents it from becoming sort of monotonous. Uh, and these dynamic scenarios can also introduce unexpected twists and turns, which further challenge the player's adaptability and strategic thinking. Uh, most camp campaigns um, will offer multiple players, will involve multiple players, sorry. Uh, and they either work together in alliances or they're competing against each other for dominance. Now, this social aspect of campaign building enhances the wargame experience by fostering camaraderie and rivalry. Um, players can learn, form lasting friendships and engage in memorable conflicts that are often discussed and remembered long after they've been played. Um, collaborative campaigns it can also introduce elements of diplomacy uh, and negotiation, adding uh, another layer of strategic depth. Campaigns often allow players to delve into deep, deeply, quite deeply into sort of historical or fantasy um, settings um, and exploring the intricacies of different periods, cultures and universes. For historical wargaming, campaigns provide a detailed recreation of actual military operations, uh, and they offer 
offer a quite a good insight into historical strategies and events. Now, whilst in fantasy settings, campaigns can often explore rich lore and world, world building, allowing players to create and experience epic sagas uh, and mythical conf conflicts. And then these kind of explorations enhance both the ed educational and entertainment value of wargaming. Often um, campaign building is, a, is an opportunity for creative expression. Game masters or campaign designers can create intricate stories and develop compelling characters and design unique battlefields uh, and as well on top of that missions as well and this creativity often um, is quite enriching for, for the wargaming experience and uh, providing a platform for storytelling and imaginative play and um, players too can express their cre creativity by developing the backgrounds and personalities of their units and commanders Basically, campaign building significantly enhances the wargaming experience. It adds depth, complexity and narrative richness. It often transforms individual battles into a cohesive, engaging um, narrative, um, fostering greater immersion and strategic thinking. Um, through character and unit progression, varied scenarios and the opportunity for collaborative and competitive play, campaigns often a more dynamic and rewarding form of wargaming. Um, whether you're exploring historical events or you're playing out a fant fantastical science fiction realms, campaign building allows players to experience the full spectrum of military strategy, narrative story making, um, and wargaming a more enjoy enriching, enjoyable hobby. Uh, to be honest, in most of the most of the games I've played, I've enjoyed the most have been ones that have been built into a campaign, um, and because it allows you to sort of build backgrounds and narrative for your armies and your leaders, and seeing those progress through the campaign can be quite. Uh, uh, attain well, I say attain, but, but it's quite rewarding. See, you know, you've you've got this commander starts off with a small war band, and during the campaign you've grown it into a massive army, and he's done some massive deeds and has been quite heroic on the battlefield, and stuff like. That. And you're building up this sort of narrative for your army and your war, your general warlord. And but it's also a good way of it for fantasy players to build up their own sort of world narrative using the campaign to develop storylines and uh, uh, and world building within 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 the sort of game they play and um, for historical it's a good way of um uh for researching and to play as well you, you know you're going to play out a campaign um, and you don't necessarily play it out exactly the way it happened in real life you know you can it's that what if element as well where you can add into it and but it gives you a reason to, to sort of do some research and background on your on your armies and those involved in some of the battlefields and the commanders and stuff like that. And, and anyone that's really like that is into historical, but is into historical research, campaign is building or running it, playing it within a campaign is a good way to sort of get your sort of teeth into some nice bit of research. Um, so I, I always prefer um, playing in a campaign. And then, you know, Pick up games are all nice when you haven't got time, and it's quite you know you just chuck an army on the table and play a game, um, which, are, which is all good, good, great, and they're fine. But I always find that playing in campaigns are a much more um, rewarding way of gaming than just pick up games. Anyway, that's all for this week. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.